In the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to walk you through all the steps you'll need to follow to create a realistic render just like this. As long as you have a basic understanding of the Blender interface, you should have no problems following along. So with that being said, let's get started. So we'll begin, of course, with the modeling process. The actual cocktail glass itself was fairly straightforward. There's nothing fancy here, just typical box modeling techniques. I started by adding a cylinder to the scene, which I then extruded and scaled until it roughly matched the photo reference. Once the basic shape was blocked out, I started working on the curved surfaces. To create the rounded sides, I added edge loops, scaled them out, then used the bevel tool to turn the cut into a smooth curve. Now I'm just going around some of the other edge loops, adding the same kind of bevel. Once the basic shape is in place, I added some smooth shading and started to define the hard edges with supporting edge loops. With that done, it's time to create the inside of the glass. The solidify modifier doesn't work very well for wine glass style objects because it makes a hollow section in the stem and base. Instead, I copied the upper section of the glass, duplicated it, and scaled it to a smaller diameter. Then I selected the two top edge loops and used the bridge loft command to quickly fill in the gap. To add some thickness to the bottom of the glass, I filled in that section with the extruding collapse tools. Then I used proportional editing to grab the new faces and pull them upward slightly. Make sure you enable connected only option in proportional editing Otherwise, you'll affect the outside verts of the glass too. Finally, I created a little lip on the top of the glass by extruding out slightly using extrude face along normals option. With the glass done, I moved on to the liquid inside of it. I copied the faces inside of the glass and duplicated them with Shift D. This section was then separated from the cocktail glass into its own model. I filled in the top cap section, extruding inwards, and then flipped the normals with Alt N so the object would display correctly in the final render. The outer edge of the liquid was pulled up slightly to simulate some water tension on the glass. Then I scaled the whole object up slightly so it would clip into the glass object. I did this to overcome a well-known limitation in cycles. I created a plane for the floor and then decided it was time to position the camera. I like to lock down my basic camera position very early into the modeling process. It saves me from adding loads of extra details that won't even appear in the final render. The modeling process for the cocktail shaker was pretty unremarkable, so I'll whiz through that part fairly quickly. I used the bevel trick in a few spots, but the shape was mostly defined through simple geometry. I let the subdivision modifier do most of the heavy lifting for me here. With the cocktail mixer modelled, I moved it into place and started on the salt shaker. It's a very simple shape, just an octagon with a few pieces scaled and extruded. I subdivided the whole thing a few times, then I used the loop tools add-on to turn the top edge into a smooth circle for the neck. Now you can see I'm just adding in some smoother beveled edges. I turned on Auto Smooth, deleted the top face and added a solidify modifier to finish the glass. For the lid of the salt shaker, I went way too overboard with the details. I added scratches to the metal and holes for the salt to come out, but you couldn't even see them in the final render. So I skipped that part of the process for this video. Mistakes like this are why it's so important to lock down your camera position early on when you're aiming for realism. Proper realism is all about attention to details and there's no point wasting your time adding details that won't even appear in the final render. The salt inside the shaker was made the same way as the liquid in the glass. Duplicate the faces inside the bottle, make it a separate object, cap the top and flip the normal direction. For the background, I used my favourite method to create quick and dirty curtains. I knew the background of this image would be out of focus in the final render so there was no need to do a cloth simulation or anything fancy. I just added a plane and gave it about 20 loop cuts. Using checker deselect, I grabbed every other edge and pulled them back on the Y axis. Then I selected all the vertical edges and added some bevel to smooth out the shape. 
You can scale on the x-axis to alter how bunched up the curtain is, or on the y-axis to add or reduce the depth. I added a bunch of horizontal loop cuts and took the mesh into sculpting mode. With symmetry off and a fairly soft brush enabled, I added some variation and smaller details. I also used the crease brush to nip in some of the folds together. So now that's all the basic modelling done, let's move on to the textures. For the liquid, I used a principal shader with a transmission value set to 1 and some transmission roughness which would make it look cloudy. I then mixed in a stronger colour as the volume input with an RGB node. I did experiment with a much more complicated volume system using a gradient texture, but it wasn't worth the effort so I abandoned that and just stuck with the RGB. The floor was a simple photo scan texture that I downloaded from textures.com. Since it was a fairly low resolution image, I doubled the tiling, then I used the hue saturation node to lower the value of the colour. I also used a colour ramp just to slightly decrease the roughness. The cocktail mixer was also very simple, just a principal shader with a metallic value of 1. I used a low value noise node through a colour ramp to add some patches of condensation to the bottle. I used the same technique to add condensation to the cocktail glass as well. For the salt inside the shaker I went for a very simple material setup. By this point I'd realised it would be quite out of focus in the final render. I plugged in a Voronoi node into the normal input of the principal shader and gave it a really high value of about 1500. I inverted the bump map so the grains of salt would face out instead of in and that was done. For the curtain material I just created a very rough matte black material with a noise node to create some simple bump. The bump made some nice fake ripples in the curtain without having to sculpt them into the mesh. At this point I decided to add some ice cubes to the drink. I subdivided a cube 10 times and took it straight into sculpt mode. With Dino Topo turned on and a fairly weak brush enabled, I just softened out the edges, added a few irregularities to the surface. Then I gave it a glass shader as a material with low roughness. I was careful throughout this process to use the correct IOR values for the transparent shaders. You can find the right IOR value of most materials online with a quick Google search. With the ice cubes done, I quickly moved them into position and prepared for the final stage of this creation, the particle system. Margaritas are traditionally served with salt around the rim of the glass, so I knew that I wanted that to be in the final render. Yes, I know they're also traditionally served with lime, but I couldn't be bothered to model a slice of lime. To create the salt, I added a low poly icosphere and moved it above the camera out of the way. I duplicated the rim of the glass and separated it into a new object. This object won't be in the final render, but it will emit the particles that will create the salt. I gave that rim a hair particle system and turned on the advanced settings. I set the render mode to object and used the icosphere as the reference object. Then I just had to play with the settings like scale, rotation, randomness and jitter until it looked good. Make sure you uncheck show emitter, otherwise the emitter object will appear in the final render. Finally. I turned on child particles and set them to interpolate mode. This setting basically scatters instant duplicates of particles around the main particles. I set it to create 40 child particles for every single emitted particle. That would give us a total of 40,000 grains of salt around the glass. The droplets of condensation on the cocktail shaker and the glass were created in the same way, so I'll skip most of that process. The condensation itself was just half a sphere which I pulled into the rough shape of a droplet of water using the proportional editing tools. The salt particles on the table were placed using a different technique. I added a few lube cuts to the plane so it would have verts and then I went into weight painting and using a very soft brush I just painted in the areas where I would like the salt to emit from. Like the other particles in the scene, I used child interpolation so that it would add extra particles to the final render. With the scene now completed, it's time to get it set up for rendering. To set the camera up for rendering, I enable depth of field in the settings. Low values here will give you a very blurry image, while high values will look very sharp. The exact number to use will depend on a few things like the scale of your scene and the distance between your objects and your camera. 
I set the camera to focus its depth of field on an empty object which was scaled and placed to be just in front of the glass. I made sure to add a few extra transparent light bounces. That's always a good move when you've got multiple transparent objects overlapping each other in a render. Then I quickly switched the default colour look to be medium high contrast and I hit the F12 button to start the render process. Once the render was complete, I enabled the denoising data then moved into the compositing tab and switched to the node view. I added a denoising node and plugged in the noisy, normal and albedo information. As a final touch of photorealism, I like to add a bit of camera distortion to my renders using the lens distort node. Increasing the distortion value will create a fisheye effect. Increasing the dispersion value adds chromatic aberrations to the render. Chromatic aberrations are those little bands of colour you sometimes see on the edges of objects in photos. You don't need to use a high value here, a little bit goes a long way. And so that, in a nutshell, is how I went about creating this image. I get a lot of requests to do tutorials on photorealism, so I really hope you've learned a thing or two from this video. If you did, please hit the like button, and if you'd like to level up your Blender skills even more, subscribe to this channel to get more videos like this in the future.